Hey guys, so Joe Biden told me it was 4th of July, so I had to get my shenanigans shirt and this little guy out of the dusty closet. Just kidding. So I want to talk to you guys today about all that's been going on. And we've been very, very lucky that parents have actually stepped up. Uh, they're waking up. The communities are activated. It's amazing. I'm seeing more and more parents. <laughs> I'm even seeing my own videos coming back to me and my friends are going, oh, I, you're, my daughter saw you on TikTok. My friend saw you on Instagram. And so it's beautiful to see these videos coming full circle back to, you know, their origin. And I'm, I'm here for it. I don't do this for money. I don't do this for fame. I don't do this for attention. I do this because the mission, the mission is protecting the next generation. That's always been the mission since 2013. And the saddest part about what I've been doing is that I've seen the censorship for many, many years and it's affecting, affected me as well. Most recently with the uh, pandemic and all of the other stuff surrounding it, we saw a lot of censorship. And we just recently heard Project Veritas and James O'Keefe parted ways and James O'Keefe went ahead and started a new Oh My God media group. Um, <laughs> O'Keefe media group, I know. But the thing that was most interesting about their live space last night. If you guys aren't on Twitter, I very encourage you to get on Twitter and start joining some of these live spaces. He had a whistleblower on there from Pfizer. She was a consultant and I worked in the medical industry. I understand what she was doing. She was the person in charge of all those other people who would go out on behalf of Pfizer and go to the doctors and say, hi, there's this new drug that we've got. You should try it. You know, the samples, you know, here's some free samples. Let's go to lunch and let's talk about this, you know. And, you know, if you prescribe this drug, you're going to get a lot of money. You know, you're going to get a lot of kickbacks from Pfizer. I mean, there's there's kind of bonuses and perks for, for using our medicine versus those other guys. So this consultant, ooh, sorry, you fell. This consultant was in charge of that department. And when they left Pfizer, Pfizer was very quick, you know, turning your badge, da, da, da. and it wasn't, she didn't leave Pfizer for any reason voluntarily. She left because she watched the video from Project Veritas exposing what was going on in the corruption. Um, and they basically pinpointed her as she could be a whistleblower. So even though she wasn't at the time, she was just an employee who happened to watch a video and they terminated her. Your badge, your laptop, please. Sure. No problem, she hands it over. And then they put her in a locked room with some random person who's not HR, who's not their boss, is a random person asking very personal questions about, you know, what did you do? What did you know? Da, 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 da. It's like, I'm a consultant. I don't really work for you. I work for my consulting firm. And they say, well, I want your, your personal phone. And she's like, you want my personal phone? I don't think so. So at that point, she's asking for a lawyer and they're kind of back off. And she's like, am I free to go? Am I free to go? Finally, after a few minutes, yeah, you're free to go. But when she walks out the door, her stuff is everywhere. Like they've gone through her things. Okay. You're going home. You're fired. Now, this is a real weird behavior for any employer, much less someone as big as Pfizer. A couple days later, there's cars, you know, appearing at her parents' house, appearing at her house. They're calling her saying, are you at this address? Are you at this address? We're coming to pick up your work laptop. So she was ultimately fired from her consulting job as well. And this is the power of big government big media and big corporation all working in unison together. You saw it when it came to the pandemic and the misinformation and the true information that was being held, suppressed, and, and prevented from ever reaching our ears. I heard about it firsthand from people who would come to me and go, I'm having issues with my menstrual cycle after I had this particular treatment. I'm ha I, I have a friend who passed away suddenly after having this treatment. I'm getting these things. VAERS wasn't reporting it. VAERS, in fact, um, was supposed to replace another reporting system that never launched because it became too accurate. You were, you were seeing the actual adverse effects of these treatments in real time. And so we can't have that. VAERS is a volunteer system. And if we're not listening, la, 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 well, then there's no volunteers. Ah, see how that works? So there has been an ongoing... Um, army trying to suppress our voices. So this is why I tell people I'm happy and we are lucky that so many others are waking up to the 
realities of what's going on. When I talk about the gender stuff at, at, it, with any parent, I say, oh, you know, this gender stuff's happening at school. Oh my gosh, they, they just blow up with the verbal diarrhea telling me about what's going on. You don't have to you know, trust the media anymore because we know that the media has been lying to us and they continue to lie to us. This is one of the reasons why independent media like Tim Cast, Joe Rogan, and uh, Benny Johnson, they're all gaining more, more, more followers because nobody wants to hear the talking head telling them about death, destruction, and ruin that isn't actually going to happen because we've been hearing it and then what the stuff that we've been experiencing, you don't talk about. We are winning this war, you guys, this culture war. The tide is turning. We are on a very, very, um, uh, on a precipice of something big. It's going to happen. The dams are starting to falter. I've been seeing it for months and I can't wait to see the flood of, of activated Americans is what I call people, is what I call myself because I'm just doing what I think I'm supposed to be doing as an American. I'm supposed to be going to my city hall. I'm supposed to be going to my school board. I'm supposed to be using my first amendment to let people know that, hey, these people exist, I, these thoughts exist, you're not alone, I'm not alone, and together we can actually make this whole place a much better place to be in. All right, you guys, I love you guys all. Have a beautiful St. Patrick's Day, and I'll talk to you guys soon. Mwah! Bye, guys.